Hey guys, welcome back to the Babbling Boots YouTube channel, where we babble about boots. In today's video, we're not going to be babbling about boots specifically, but we are going to be babbling about some footwear from Viberg, specifically their leather slides, which I've had for about a year now, and I just kind of wanted to give an update and review on them and what I think of them after wearing them for about a year. So let's get into it. Slides themselves do come in this nice matte finished box, which is very similar to the boot boxes that Viberg has if you've ever ordered a pair of boots from their website. It just has a nice, high quality, luxurious feel. This one's obviously just slimmer because the slides themselves are a lot smaller than boots. For the specs of the slides, and I'm gonna be careful to say these are slides, Viberg does have what they consider, I think, slippers on their website, which are more of a structured shoe looking shoe and it's like a closed back these are just slides because it's you know you just slide them on your foot and walk for the specs of these though this is cf stead calf leather i think they call it their whiskey regency calf the website says they're unlined but i'm looking at it here and it looks like it's definitely lined with similarly calf leather i know it's not the same calf leather because it has a different appearance to it and it's also you can clearly see like the stitch line where it was stitched in there so it's a lining they do have other versions of the slide on their website, a lot of them which are suede. And the suede ones do look like those are online. They just use the smooth side of the suede on the inside of it. So you can get online options, but I don't think these are actually online. For the stitching, the website, it looks to me like it's just a stitch down construction, but the website refers to it as a British style self flat binding. I mean, if you look at it, it looks like the vamp upper and then the midsole insole were all basically just stitched down together and then they put on this outsole probably cemented on there so it's for all intents and purposes stitched down shoe they just give the name british style self flat binding for whatever reason maybe it just sounds fancier or cooler but it's stitched down for sizing on these the sizing is a little bit different than you would normally see from Fiberg. I believe the sizes are small, medium, large, and extra large. And each size corresponds to one of their actual shoe sizes. So a small is about a size six in Viberg, medium is a size eight, large is 10, and then extra large is 12 plus in size. So you basically want to try to get the slide that is closest to your Viberg size. And the medium, as I said, is an eight. My ideal Viberg size is a size 7.5, so I went with eight which would be a US 9. I thought these were probably going to be a little bit big when I got them because I didn't get the specific size, but I actually found that this isn't lasted, so it's not going to be the same shape as like, you know, 2030 last, 2020 last. The size of this was actually probably a little more snug than I would have wanted, especially on the sides of the toe here, which is, seems to be kind of like a recurring issue with a lot of my boots. For some reason, I have a narrow foot, but boots and I guess apparently slides are just fit a little bit too narrow for me. Initially compared to the 2030, I feel like this is actually more snug in the toe box than the 2030 last is because this is, I said, a size eight. My ideal size is a size 7.5 and it just feels more constricting. Looking at the shoe though, it's kind of has this weird thing, the specific slide where the leather kind of tucks in under my foot. So my foot isn't able to go all the way to the side. I don't know if that's making it feel tighter, especially, you know, on the inside of my foot. And I've tried fixing this and wearing it over time, but for whatever reason, I don't know if that's just the way it was sewn or stitched or the way the leather bends. It does it for basically both of these where this leather is kind of tucking in under my shoe. So it's kind of self restricting it. That's what they should recall it. Instead of a self binding, it should just be self restricting because that's essentially what it is. So I don't know that if it's really snugger or it's just the way that these shoes kind of collapsed and molded to my feet over time that makes them more snug. I will say that these are a size eight as I mentioned and my foot kind of, you can kind of see where my, actually my, my foot, the heel of my foot has imprinted and it's basically like the back part of the shoe. So my, my heel is pretty much sitting on the stitching of these and kind of hangs off a little bit on the back. So they're kind of too small for my foot really. And I've tried to push my foot more to the front of the slide, but as you can see, you know, this part, my foot is going pretty much all the way up. So I can't shove it anywhere towards the front anymore. I guess it's just kind of too narrow in the toe box. So my foot's hanging off the back of it a little bit, 
which is kind of annoying, honestly. Another thing that I don't really like about the boot, or the, they're not boots, they're slides. The other thing I don't really like about these slides is, well, the variation between the left and the right shoe in terms of grain break. So if you look at this right slide here, it's got very nice tight grain break. It molds nicely to the shape of your foot and the curves of it. It just looks nice. This is basically what the picture online looks like, and this is what it should look like. For whatever reason, this left boot shoe slide has like way worse grain break. It's very noticeable when you have them on your foot. Like this one just looks way worse. It's just super wrinkly and unattractive looking. So what that kind of shows is that Viberg is using probably a lower quality part of the hide for this shoe. Probably somewhere around like the belly of it where the grain structure is not as tight and it's more loose. And then for this right one, they use probably more of like the bend of the cow where the grain structure is tighter and you get these nice almost rolls in it. And I think that's really, if they had done the same for both shoes, like it'd be one thing, like if the right boot had been of similar quality in the portion of the height, at least they'd be matching, right? And they might both have poor grain break, but it wouldn't look really weird to have two different ones. I think that's my biggest complaint. And they totally could have made sure that both shoes had pieces cut from the same area of the height. I think that's just kind of more poor quality assurance on their side. Another thing I don't really like about it is this right shoe, which this is probably more of a personal preference. It kind of came with this. I don't know if it's a stain on the leather or it's just like a defect in the leather from the cow itself, but it looks like just like a splotch on this stain here, which I know a lot of people like, you know, the natural looking patina and the scarring, which I do too, but this doesn't look like a scar. Even if it is, it just looks like a stain on the shoe. Like I dropped something on it and stained it. And this is how it came, which is unfortunate. I guess I could have returned them at the time, but I just didn't feel like it. I think I got these on sale for like 30 or $40 off. So I was like, well, they're on sale. I'll just stick with them. So that's another thing that, you know, Viberg could have done a little bit better with the QC on these. As far as the overall specs of them, as I mentioned, this is Sea of Stead calf. It looks like it's lined with calf leather. The insole footbed here is probably the same whiskey Regency calf that they used on the outside of the upper here. The midsole is a nice thick piece of veg tan leather. So you did get a nice, probably eight to 10 ounce piece of leather here. And then you get this outsole, which is like, a, I think they call it brown on their website, but it looks black to me. It's just like a black crepe sole. So overall, you get a lot of natural components in it. The outsole is rubber, which helps with traction. So I don't really have any complaints with the actual specs of the flippers themselves, the slides, if you will. I will say that I bought these slides pretty much to wear exclusively inside my house. And the soles have held up very well. They're not slippery. They don't leave marks and scuffs on your floors. Like I've had slippers before where I've worn them around my, my house and there's just black streaks that form all over the floors. I think from like the rubber outsole just kind of wearing off onto the floor and it looks really bad. And yeah, I had to stop wearing those slippers actually. But this is a nice crepe sole. I think it's probably like a natural rubber sole. So it doesn't actually leave any abrasions on your floor if that's a concern you have. So you're good in that category. So next I'm gonna do a weight comparison for the slides to see how much they weigh or if they even register on my scale at all because I'd imagine they are pretty light. So here we go. We'll do the right one first. 9.3 ounces, not even a pound. 9.7 ounces, that's a fairly big difference. 0.4 ounces more for the left one. Let me move it around to make sure. Yep, that one's right. Yep, okay. So those are a little bit of a discrepancy in weight between the two, but overall they're under a pound. So you're not gonna be straining your feet wearing these all day. So my overall thoughts on these slides, I think the materials that they're made with are very high quality, the construction of them. My main issue is one, the way it fits my foot, it's kind of tight and the leather just kind of molds under the shape of my foot, which makes it even more tight and harder to wear because my foot won't go all the way into them. And it's just kind of restricting, I guess. And then also the QC with the leather isn't that great. This splotch here and then just the massive grain break on this one compared to this one, it's just really unsightly. So what I ended up doing was I actually made my own pair of slippers probably about six months ago, which is essentially my own version of the Viberg slippers here. And what I did was, I'm gonna move this out of the way. 
I just took the Viberg sole here because it's not lasted. It's just basically, I guess, a generic looking sole. I just traced the outline of that onto a piece of paper and then added more room in the toe box here and then made it a little bit longer so that it's a little bit wider and it's also yeah, slightly longer than that one to give my foot more room in it. And that actually did help with the issue on the inside of the shoe here. You can see, you know, where it tucks under my foot. This one does not have that issue at all. It fits my foot basically perfectly. One thing that's interesting about slides, and it does this with the Vibergs a little bit, my foot doesn't go all the way to the top of it. As you can see here, there's like a little space, which I guess is probably fine. Uh, this one has more space in it, in the tops, which you might think, oh, well then they're too big, but your foot doesn't actually fit up into that space. So I think it's just an aesthetic design where Viberg wanted it to be a little more pointy and not as rounded, and I just kind of copied the shape of what they had. So mine's also has that point to it. If I just took that bit off and made it more rounded, then you know I wouldn't have this kind of dead area in the top, which I think is fine. It's not that big of a deal to me. You can just more readily see the outline of my foot. And I will say that this is the first and only pair of footwear I've made this far. Well, I did make a pair for my wife as well that she has, but her slippers and my slippers are the only pair of footwear I've made. So the stitching and the, the quality is probably not going to be as polished as Viberg's, but I think for overall I did a pretty good job with the stitching. This is all hand stitched. Everything's hand cut, hand stitched, hand hole punched as well. So the fact that it looks pretty consistent all the way around without any issues, I give myself a lot of credit for that. It could be better on the sides because I don't have like a buffing thing to actually sand the edges of the soles. So it's kind of not perfect in some areas, but they're inside shoes, so it's fine. I like them more than my Viberg's now. I can go over the specs of these a little bit. This is Wicked and Craig's traditional harness leather in medium brown, and it has kind of almost like a burgundy tone to it. It's got a lot of red in it, and in some lights it's more brown, but a lot of it is has kind of a red hue to it, which I think ages nicely and gives it a little bit more depth of color. I think I bought this in four to five ounces of leather, and it's lined with this thing called Bentley Velour Calf Suede. I just bought it online and it's very, very soft. Not as soft as the Kudu suede, but it's it's a close second. And it's an indigo, so it kind of has a nice contrast. You've got the reddish brown upper with this nice indigo navy-ish blue lining. And it's very soft on the inside and it doesn't get hot. It's thin enough to where your foot doesn't get hot, but it does offer a little bit of cushion for the top of your feet. Then we have the insole here, which is the same upper here that four to five ounce Wicked and Craig harness leather. And their harness leather is a little bit different than a lot of other veg tan leathers and it's stuffed with oils and waxes, as you know, you hear with all veg tan leathers. But they do something called jack glazing where they bring the oils to the surface of the leather, which gives it kind of a nice shine and sheen to it without actually hiding the natural grain and character of the leather, which I really like a lot. And one thing that I did with mine is, you know, unlike Viberg who, did a lot of grain break. I made sure that the, the part of the hide that I took mine from was more towards the bins. This one is, you know, pretty much perfectly done in that way. Not really any heavy grain at all. This one I knew when I was cutting it that I was getting a little bit close to where the bins of the hide were, or the, the belly of the hide, sorry, where the grain gets a little bit more loose and I tried to minimize that as much as possible, but I didn't have like a lot of my hide left to work with. So there's just like a little bit of break in this area, but it's not near as bad as, as this one. You can totally avoid this if you are really trying to. I just don't think that Viber was probably trying as much. So that's like upper liner, the footbed, same Wicked and Craig leather, and then I put a 10 to 12 ounce midsole in here, which is just a slab of veg tan leather as well. So I stitched the upper, the liner, the insole and midsole together in stitch down fashion, or as they say on theirs, British style self flat binding. I guess it's the same thing I've done here, which is cool because I didn't know that when I was making it. And then I just got a similar kind of a crepe sole online and just cut it to the shape of it and then glued that on. And one thing I did is because I don't really like just the idea of having a sole glued on because you know, I'm afraid it'll come off over time. 
This one hasn't really had that issue. It might have not either, but I just wanted more reinforcement. So I got some very small, I think they're called clinching nails that are really small. And I just nailed them along the, the edges of both soles to make sure that they're really enforced. And these are small enough nails which they don't go all the way through the midsole and they're on the edge anyway so it's not like it's going to poke into my foot but I haven't had any issues with those coming out and it's added a lot of durability to these slippers and I have also not had this issue where you know I walk across the floor and it leaves streaks. While I have my slippers out and off my feet I did want to do kind of a weight comparison to see what the difference is between them so I'm going to pull my scale back out here. So this one is one pound two ounces and this one is one pound, two ounces weight. So I somehow, oh, one pound, 2.2 ounces. That's less exciting. Wait, they're both one pound, 2.2 ounces now. So these actually somehow in my rough guessing of my shoes, I got them to be both one pound, 2.2 ounces, which is about three ounces more than the Vibergs. So they're definitely on my feet. They feel more sturdy and stable and they have just a little bit more rigidity to them. Whereas these feel more like you're walking on the ground and they're a lot more flexible. I actually kind of prefer these because it, it kind of has the, the slide aesthetic, but it feels almost more like you're wearing a shoe, which I think just has a lot more stability and rigidity to it, which is nice. So overall, I bought these slippers for $235. I think that's what they retail for. They actually have this exact model on the Viberg website right now for sale and it is selling for $235. I think I bought these on sale last year for around $200. For that price, I mean, I think if the leather clicking had been better, I think it had been a, a more reasonable purchase. If the sizing options were I mean, I know there's like slides, so they're not making as much money off of them. So it's harder to offer more options for those because it's just not worth it for them. So it's easier for them to just make four models and then people, you know, pick the one that's closest to them. It's just hard for me to really like these because my feet don't really fit in them comfortably as I would like to. They're kind of hanging off the back and they're more squenched. I could have, I guess, tried out a size 10, but I think that would have just been way too big for my feet. So would I recommend these to people? I don't know. It's hard, right? Because... If you can make them fit your feet and you're okay with the possibility that the leather doesn't match, then I think they're a solid, sturdy purchase. They're very durable. I know that there's a, I think is it, I think Beckon and Seminon, which is I think a, a South American brand, they do make slides as well for probably around the same price or cheaper. I don't really like the aesthetic of the Beckon and Seminon slides as much, but if you're looking for a nice pair of leather slides, it's high quality. It's an option. As far as other options, I haven't really found a whole lot online. I mean, there are what I used to wear were Birkenstocks inside, which are actually very comfortable. And you can get those in suede and other types of like new book leathers. I think that's also a good option if you're looking for something you can wear around inside or maybe, you know, outside every now and then. It's hard for me to recommend these Viberg slides for the price of $235 plus dollars. I just don't really wear these as much anymore because I like the way my other ones fit. So I guess your options would be these Viberg's $235. Hopefully the size fits you and the leather looks pretty good. You can go on the line, get Beckett Seminon. They also have a version of some slides. So I think it has more cushion. I don't think it looks as nice aesthetically. You can get some Birkenstocks on Amazon for around a hundred something dollars, which I think is a reasonable option. Or you could go the route I did and just make your own, which can cost a lot more money with the resources you need and the time. But you'll have a pair of your own handmade slippers. So that's the moral of my story. You can make your own things for more money and time. So this has been my one year review-ish of the Viberg slides that I got. Hopefully someone online found this helpful. If not, it's too bad. I don't really care. But everyone else, please like and subscribe and thank you for watching.